This video is sponsored by Audible. Hey guys, it's Andong, and today is a good day because we are making a rich, creamy, and hearty salmon soup from Finland. I'm not gonna try to pronounce its original name because that is impossible, but what I will try to do is to convince you to make this easy and super quick, only 20 minute recipe, which with a few unconventional hacks is gonna take this soup to the next level, I promise. Welcome to episode seven of Soup Season. So here's the thing guys, I have been to Finland once, but I have not actually had this soup on that trip. And yet I have had this soup in its natural environment. So how does that work? Well, if you follow this channel, you know I have spent many summers in Karelia, which is the border region between Russia and Finland, which has gone back and forth between the two countries and nowadays is part of the Russian Federation. And at least when it comes to its nature, it is very similar to Finland in a lot of ways, which is called the land of a thousand lakes for a very good reason. I mean, check out this map. It's actually kind of unreal. So needless to say, fish is definitely a staple food in the region. And one of the most popular kinds of fish has got to be salmon. And you know, everybody loves salmon. I think even people who don't like fish love salmon. And this soup, okay, I'm going to try to pronounce it. Lohiketo is probably one of the tastiest and easiest ways to make salmon, period. It really is incredible how little you actually have to do to make the soup, which is probably gonna make it the easiest soup out of this entire series. And so in that spirit, let's just go ahead and make it after a quick word from this video's sponsor. At Audible, you can find the biggest selection of audiobooks ever. From bestsellers to new releases to celebrity memoirs, languages, business, you name it. But even beyond audio, Audiobooks, Audible has so much more to offer. For example, add free versions of the most binge-worthy podcasts out there, original entertainment, comedy, wellness guides, anything that will make your ears happy, okay? You can listen across all of your devices, starting with your phone all the way up to anything that runs Alexa. Personally, I love to put on a good audiobook when I cook. It's like the most relaxing quality me time I can think of. So the longer the cooking, the better. Recently, I've been listening to Barack Obama's latest memoir, A Promised Land, narrated by himself and really enjoying it. I got so many insights that help me understand what's like happening in the world these days. So for everything you love to listen, to all in one app, be sure to visit audible.com slash Andong. You will also find the link below. Or if you're in the United States, text Andong to 500 500. New members can sign up for a free 30 day trial of Audible Plus, meaning you can stream as much content as you want. No limits. That's audible.com slash Andong. Thank you, Audible, for sponsoring this video. All right, so I'm starting with a large pot on high heat and adding one and a half liters of water. While waiting for the water to come to temp, peel two potatoes and dice them. I cut them into thirds and then repeat in the perpendicular, kind of making these potato batons. Then cut those into one to two centimeter cubes. Similarly, peel one carrot, cut lengthwise into quarters, then cut them into one centimeter chunks. We're trying to go for consistent sizing here. Now to prepare your leek, cut the green part, tie them into a bundle so we can use those in the stock only and make sure we can get them out later. Now grab the white parts of the leek, quarter them lengthwise, then dice to match the size of potatoes and carrots. I'm also gonna add a little bit of salt now for the veggies to absorb and bring out their flavor, but the proper seasoning will come later. Don't rush it. I'm actually gonna suggest adding the salt before the bundle of leeks because uh, I'm having a hard time stirring the salt in now. So in terms of spices, this soup is very, very basic. Get out a mortar if you have one. If not, just leave them whole. Then go for a pinch of peppercorns and just a few juniper berries and then gently crush them uh, so they can infuse into the stock more easily. Some recipes actually call for allspice and some ask for juniper and I can't tell which one is more authentic but my gut says juniper. All right, now add two bay leaves to the soup as they are but about those spices. If you were to add those straight up, um, you'd get mouthfuls of these things and we don't really want that. So you can use a cheese cloth to make a little bundle but I assume you don't have that at home so we're gonna do this the, the, the tricky way with a good old tea bag. Carefully open that up, get the tea out for later use if you like and add the crushed spices into the empty bag. 
God damn it, this is not efficient. Literally any other way would be smarter, but okay. Uh, so to seal the back, I just kind of folded it over and then used a toothpick to pierce the back twice. Kind of like if I was sewing a basic stitch. Et voila, a convenient spice bag ready to get added into our soup and guaranteeing easy removal. So back to our soup, we can actually start seeing our first bubbles. It's about to boil, so I will turn the heat down to medium. Here's the thing, traditionally there'd be fish stock in this because you'd start with a whole fish, bones and all, right? But we didn't, so to take its place, I wanna make like a salty umami flavor base from white miso, then mixed with fish sauce and a bit of full fat cream whisked together until smooth and the lumps are gone, then incorporating even more cream. So eventually I surrendered to the fact that I need a bigger vessel. So then I can also add four tablespoons of cornstarch and mix with no stress. So set this aside for now because we need to talk about salmon. I got this frozen kind that I already brought back up to room temp and that was pre-cut into these strips. So I'm just gonna do two centimeter cubes. So you might be wondering, whoa, this does not really look like a whole lot of salmon. And that is true. I only used 200 grams of fish and that's because I used eco-friendly, higher quality and sustainable salmon, which is actually pretty pricey. It's, you know, I don't wanna treat it like a cheap filler. Instead, let's just look at it as like precious little jewels in our soup. So get those chunks into our soup and make sure they're submerged. But I do hope by now your stock isn't boiling anymore. We just kinda wanna gently poach the fish for a few minutes. And so while that's happening, I am preparing our dill. Cut the tough stock and reserve a few leaves for garnishing later. The rest of the leaves can be minced finely. And so with that, we're actually ready Ready to finish everything. See what I did there? Remove the bundle of leek, then add the cornstarch, miso, and fish sauce mixture into the stock. The reason why I'm adding the mixture now is because if you heat cream too aggressively, it could separate and we do not want that. Oh, and this is also the moment where I realized that the tea bag of spice is still in the pot. So yeah, I had to fish that out. And I mean, look, you can see how it only took like a minute or two for the starch to thicken everything. This is a little bit thicker than the hot and sour soup from last time, but not not by that much. It's kind of at that creamy and silky stage and not yet at goop stage. Now we can get that freshly chopped dill into the soup and mix it in. Optionally, you can remove the bay leaves now if you're afraid of them. Uh, I seem to have lost one, but I ain't scared. The only thing I am scared of is the cream separating. So take that pot off the heat to make sure it doesn't boil on you last minute. Taste to check for seasoning, but this was already pretty damn spot on, which means you know what time it is. That's right, let's go and taste this bad boy. What a perfect cozy spot to have a picnic. You'll get punished. And now it is time for another well-deserved bowl of a Finnish lo lohike lo lohi there's there's no point there's no point in me trying to pronounce this oh, oh my god this smells ridiculously good and in terms of garnish i think all this needs is a little fresh sprig of dill oh like that standing up like a christmas tree and finally, just, you know, for that extra zing, a few fresh cracks of black pepper. Oh no, we've been here before. I think this is as good as it's gonna get. Now let me taste the perfect spoon of Finnish salmon soup and see if we went too far or not. <laughs> we did not go too far. It's so silky and creamy and rich. I don't know why I'm first talking about the potatoes, but the potatoes basically turned into a little piece of butter. They're so tender. Yes. <laughs> mm. The soup is fantastic. The first note I'm getting is definitely that mild sweetness from the cream and the leeks. But then right after, that silky, smooth soup spreads all over my mouth. And it is only then that I truly begin to appreciate the many levels of umami that this has. Seriously. Mm. That miso, it's not like it tastes like miso soup. Not at all. 
but that miso gives it an almost cheesy note. The fish sauce is more than enough to make up for the lack of fish stock in here. And then all these different chunks of creamy potato, of slightly sweet carrots, but especially that piece of sustainably sourced salmon that I spent half a fortune on. Here's the thing. Because this is not full of salmon, but because we only have like a few good pieces, it makes me appreciate and treasure them even more. Here's a somewhat surprising verdict. Out of all the soups we've made on soup season so far, I mean, I liked all of them, but this one might be the winner. It was not a contest, but this one still wins. How is this possible? It's the simplest, yet the best of all the soups. So I am gonna finish this and I cannot wait to get back to the studio and feed the rest of the soup to the team so everybody appreciates how delicious this is. Seriously guys, try this soup. You will not regret it, I promise. Damn, this is good. Do it, make it, take a photo, post it on Instagram, tag me. And make sure to tune in for the next episode of Soup Season.